Hello there guys, it's eBird Online and I'm here with the latest review from Before the 90 Days. And this is episode 7 and 8 for Ash and Avery. Sometimes being a biatch is a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. And as per usual, the eBird's stepping forward. Very quickly before I begin, I just want to say thank you so much guys for subscribing. And please, if you've yet to do so, press that red button. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at hembird99. I have something interesting coming up for you guys next week. So now's a great time to follow me. So first up today, we're going to talk about Ash and Avery. I've been in Australia for three or four days now, and I have an amazing chemistry with Ash, and I can see a life with Ash now. But she also tells us she knows that his brother doesn't really seem to like her. And all that tells us is God has given her the gift of sight. And it seems as if these guys are going on a trip. And Ash tells us, I'm taking Avery to Cairns. And it's a tropical, wild place. And Cairns is in Northern Australia, so it's quite a little way from where they're going. And it's kind of like a holiday within a holiday. And Ash tells us, I always recommend to my clients that couples need to have a break from their everyday life and just get to learn about each other. What? One Ash, Avery's not a client. And this tells us all we need to know about how Ash sees this. It's a business deal. It's a transaction for Ash. It's not a relationship. He talks to her as if she's a client. He answers her questions with another question as if she's a client. Or he says, thanks for sharing that with me. Avery, hear this loud and clear. You're a client. Also, break. Why do you need a break? You've only met him for three days. What do you need a break from? If you need a break from your everyday life, that means you're both working and you get snatched little meals and snatched moments. And maybe your weekends are full of kids from previous relationships. So you need your own alone away time. Why do you need that when you haven't got your kid? She hasn't got either of her kids. What do you need a break from? Everyday life. This is a holiday. So what you're saying is you need a holiday from your holiday, Ash. And I've got a theory for the real reason for this. It's because Ash wants to make this time for Avery a magical time. And that's why he's taking her to a tropical, wild place. He wants to make everything so magical that she thinks, wow, this whole life with Ash is totally going to be like this. It's going to be different. It's going to be fun all the time. We're not thinking about meeting his kid or everyday concerns that we have when we're trying to mesh two families together and to move someone halfway across the world and deal with visas and K1 and emigration to another country. She's thinking about holidays and tropical places and nice things. And he says we need a break from everyday life just to get to learn about each other. What do you need to learn? You've only been together for three days. All she's learned thus far is that you evade any proper questions. All she knows thus far is that you've probably not told her the truth about your brother and your son and your ex-wife. What does she need to learn about you? What Ash is actually trying to do is to ensure that she doesn't get to find out any more about him or she doesn't get a wider window into him or into his life. More than likely, he doesn't want her in his hometown so she can't bump into the multitude of women he's probably seeing on the side and has been seeing in the nine months that he's been talking to her. That's far more likely. And when they get to Cairns, they go for a picnic and it does actually look very picturesque and very nice and they're sitting atop a cliff and he's made a really nice picnic for them to eat. And Ash says it's very serene, but he doesn't look very serene or very comfortable. He looks nervous, as if she's going to ask him some real questions, which hey-ho, of course she is. And she begins. First, she asks about Taj, and she says, I feel that there are problems with bringing him to America, more problems than you first made out. It seems to me as if you're sugarcoating it. And Ash first looks left and then looks right. It takes him some time. And then he says, um, yeah, that's your perspective. And I respect that. And Avery looks at him as if to say, what? Why don't you answer my questions? And she says to him, why are you hiding things? Why can't you ever be honest with me? And Ash then says, well, um, I think it's because if I tell you the real truth, if I tell you that there may be problems or issues to overcome, I get worried that you'll think, okay, great, let's just leave it there. And then you'll leave me. And Avery says, you can't just not talk about real issues in case you think I'm going to leave you. This is a big step that we're both taking and we need to talk about it. And she says, I think that the way you speak is very rehearsed and you've got a very rehearsed way of saying things. And Ash's face is entirely blank. And usually, I guess, when he's got a client, the client's paying him to try to find them love. So they're in some state of not desperation, but there's something that they want. And they think in Ash, they've got the magic answer. And Ash doesn't seem to have any decent response to this. And then he says in his formulaic manner, 
I do understand that you asking questions mean that you care for me and that you care for us and that you want the situation to work. Yes, all of that's pretty obvious because I've left my two kids at home to come halfway around the world to see you, Ash. So that's pretty obvious and evident. But yet he still doesn't answer the question. He's just looking at her blankly. And then she says, after last night, which obviously we know she met his brother last night, I didn't really feel that he was particularly bothered. And she wanted to sort of say, he doesn't really seem to like me. And Ash looked at her blankly and then said, um, yeah, um, for me, I see it as, um, as if he were maybe uncomfortable with what questions he needed to ask you. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Um, Ash, you know your brother. I don't know him, but I can say one thing. He looked very comfortable in his own skin. He looked very comfortable in the situation. He didn't really like what he was seeing. He didn't like the idea of you going to America. And he didn't like the idea of you being maybe separated from your son. And he also knew very well that it's not true that your ex-wife has said, yeah, my son can just go to America and live with his dad. He knows all of this is not true. So he wasn't uncomfortable with what questions to ask Avery. And you very well know that. What is it you're hiding? You're hiding your real self. And who can blame you? There's a lot to hide. And sometimes when I'm listening to Ash, I just think, where's your off button? And whenever I'm thinking Ash can't get any more stupid, he keeps on proving me wrong. So guys, we have yet another situation where Avery is asking Ash a question and Ash is trying to double speak her out of getting a proper answer. But Avery keeps on saying, this relationship's perfect. I can see it going really far. How can you see it going really far when you've seen so little thus far? You haven't met his kid. You haven't met his ex-wife. The brother doesn't seem to like you and you never get a straight answer from Ash. So what is it you like about Ash? I think we all know. And don't think that we've forgotten you did that on the first night. So next time we see Ash and Avery, they're still in Cairns and Avery's telling us yet again, despite all the chemistry that I have with Ash, he's unrealistic about the problems that we face. No, he's not unrealistic, Avery. That's why you don't know anything. He just really doesn't care. He just wants to get on that plane and fly to the good old US of A. And Ash tells us, Avery tells me that she's not getting the real me. She is getting the real you, Ash. A real slippery, slimy little snake that tries to wriggle out of everything. But Ash has got an idea of how he can remedy this. How he can remedy the fact that Avery is not getting the real him. Oh, I wonder what it is. One, it might be sitting down and having a frank chat. Two, it might be just telling her the truth about his previous relationships. Or three, it might be setting up the meetings she so desperately wants with his ex-wife and his son. No, it's none of the above. Ash tells us, although there's more things I'm sure I have to share with Avery, I hope that going to a crocodile park will foster some sort of playfulness so that she can feel more certain about the relationship. Ash, how can going to a crocodile park possibly iron out the many, many questions, the growing questions that Avery has about putting your two families together? You want to foster playfulness so that she can feel more certain about the relationship. Translation, I want once again to try and pull the wool over Avery's eyes. Usually people use these trips so they can get to know the real person. But to Ash, that will signal the death knell for this relationship. So he chooses to oscillate between bullshit and distraction. Today, it's the turn of distraction. So they get out onto a little speedboat and they go with a tour guide around a crocodile lake. And the tour guide tells them that crocodiles are a sneaky monster and they have the strongest jaw of any animal on earth. And Ash grabs Avery and says, don't worry, baby, I'll look after you. If I were Avery, I'd take my chances with the crocodile. There's less chance of being bitten. But it's all becoming too much for Avery. She just wants to know now. She wants to know, will I meet your ex? Will I meet your son? And it all comes out again later that evening. So they're at the hotel, which looks like quite a nice hotel. And they're sitting at the pool having a drink. And then Avery again tentatively apologises for constantly bringing up hard conversations. Avery, don't. You only have to keep bringing up difficult conversations because Ash never, ever answers any of your questions. And Avery asks again, when will I get to speak with Taj's mum and Taj? When will you sort out this meeting? And Ash again says, um, uh, well, I'm still working on it with Sian. That's the mum. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's gonna happen. You're still working on what? According to you, she's already said, yeah, don't worry. You can take the kid and you can go and live halfway across the world. I don't mind. I'll just see my kid once, twice a year at best. We know that that hasn't been said. We know that you're lying, Ash, and it's all going to come out sooner rather than later. And then Ash tells production later that he's very scared. 
He says, my ex-wife, Sean, is very, very honest. So I don't know what she's going to say to Avery. I do, Ash. She's going to tell her that you're a cheating mofo who's not to be trusted. She's going to let her know that as soon as you started this so-called business as a relationship coach, you showed yourself to be two things. One, a scamming little git. Two, completely heartless and impervious to people's desperation. And three, a goddamn filthy little cheat. And then finally, the penny seems to drop with Avery. Phew, it takes a while, doesn't it? And Avery says she feels that Ash is hiding his ex-wife. Never. And she's worried about what the ex-wife will reveal. Don't be Avery. She's only going to reveal what you really in your heart of hearts already know. Ash is no good. So let me know your thoughts. I think that he hasn't at all asked the ex-wife if he can take the son to America. And he knows very well that he will not be allowed to. But he wants to try and pretend to Avery that, oh, this is all a big shock to me. I thought I could take my son. Oh, hey-ho, seems like I have to come on my own. Never mind. I've got another 140 odd million women to ply my sleazy trade with in America, which is far more than I have in Australia. So buckle up, let's go. That's all Ash is thinking. And every time Ash speaks, all I think to myself is, is there an app that I can download somewhere that will make you disappear? So it does seem as if Ash does like her. And I'm not sure if he genuinely likes her or if he just wants to get to America. It might be a combination of both. But what is sure is that he's consistently always lying to her. And you have to ask the question, why? And the only answer that I can give is because he's not all that he says he is. He's a very duplicitous character and he knows very well if she knew the truth she might well withdraw and someone as good looking as Avery has got lots and lots of options and Ash knows this. So let me know what you think in comments down below and I will see you very soon with my next review. As usual please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Twitter at mbird99. Thank you so much for listening, you've been listening to eBird Online. Ciao for now!